Hey buddies, Potemic Whiskey here, and welcome to a game I've been sponsored to play, Timberborn. This is a game about my favourite animal, the beaver. I have, since I was a young man, thought many a night about the noble beaver. And I'm finally glad that a game gives me the opportunity to satisfy the beaver's needs. Because this is a colony building game where you choose a faction and you help your beavers build a little town. Welcome to the town of Beavertopia. And uh, it's time to meet our beavers. Here is Crawdrag, who is uh, homeless and unemployed, and hopefully we can fix that for him. If we place down a couple of these lumberjack flags, our beavers will be able to run over here and start chopping down these trees, because we all know that a beaver's greatest craving is for wood. But our beavers don't just need wood. They get hungry for berries, so let's place down a gatherer as well. If we're going to keep our beavers happy, we've got to give them a diverse set of food and goods. Oh, look at them go. They're chopping down the trees. That's so adorable. I really like how cute the beavers are. Here's Zumai just nibbling away on a piece of wood here for himself. Actually, is there even a way to tell the gender of my beavers? I don't think so. I think the most important thing that you want to get up early game, though, is a little inventor's hut. So many of the important pieces of technology are locked behind this, like getting levees so you can block rivers and build dams. Every beaver can actually have a job in your town, and that's why we want to start getting as many beavers as possible. And each individual beaver has, like, needs and wants that you can satisfy. So if we increase the social life of these beavers they'll have more children that's why i also tend to build my campfire early it satisfies the beavers need for a bit of social life and you know what 16 hour work days that's not quite good enough for me let's go up to 17 hours that extra hour is all important i think our beavers are also going to need a place to live so i'll build a few lodges here so they don't have to sleep on the ground anymore my beavers are getting a little bit thirsty I need to get this uh water pump going kind of forgot about that one <laughs> uh that might actually be the end of my colony if my beavers don't get enough water quick enough Oh, they're drinking now. That's good. All right, satisfy your thirst, you hungry beavers. You know what? 24-hour workday until you're all satisfied. Um, I can't have any thirsty guys out here dying on me. All right, everyone's got a drink. We can go back to normal. That was a close call there. You can actually kill your colony pretty much instantaneously if you make the mistake that I just did. You can see here Shaq Tealer, who lives in a lodge and works at a lumberjack flag, has fulfilled his social life, so they're more likely to have babies. Kuguth and Venmara have grown up. You start off with uh, a bunch of beavers and then a couple of children, and they actually grow up faster too if they themselves have a social life. So fulfilling the needs of your beavers is actually a really big deal because it increases how long they live and how fast they reach maturity. Oh, my beavers are happier than ever. I've reached a new well-being high score. That means I've satisfied five out of all of the needs that beavers can have. And that's great because there's tons of things like nutrition and fun, knowledge, spirituality, aesthetics, and then awe. Awe, I think, is the hardest one to do because you need like thousands of science and hundreds of wood to even begin to build these sorts of uh, monuments. My initial supply of wood is beginning to run out, and that's why I'm working so hard on getting some science, because I need to be able to unlock the forester. Once I have the forester, I'll be able to replant trees and have an essentially infinite supply. And I probably don't need four uh, lumberjacks anymore, so I'll pop one guy off there and put him into the farmhouse, and then we'll plant some tasty carrots for our little critters because that actually satisfies nutrition one and if we satisfy that need our beavers will live longer i can't really afford to build much more though because in order to build a forester i need to get planks and in order to get planks i need to build a lumber mill and in order to build a lumber mill uh, that means i need to power it with either a water wheel or a power wheel which will take up a worker and so that's going to cost me like nearly 100 wood and i've only got 62 in the bank Pop down my lumber mill here, and we'll get a beaver-powered power wheel behind it. Let's expand our carrot farms. My people are going to need a lot of food, actually, if I'm thinking about things. With these two things built, though, I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable about spending wood, because I just need the forester, and then we've got renewable wood forever. Oh, we just got our very first baby beaver, Zinjo. Welcome to the colony, Zinjo. He's an age one little baby boy, I'm assuming, <laughs> who's sitting around getting himself a social life on his own somehow. What? Zinjo! <laughs> Wait a minute, how are you? I guess, he's, I guess he's his own best friend. I've almost completely cleared out all these berries, so I don't think I need a second gatherer flag anymore. We've got plenty of food in storage, so my beavers are very happy. And we finally can unlock the forester. We got ourselves 75 science. Boosh. Let's go ahead and unlock that. I'm going to deactivate one of my inventor hoods, though, in favor of starting to produce some planks out of my lumber mill. Pop down my forester's hut. We'll get that built ASAP. And we'll start delineating this area for uh, tree production. There's actually tree types of tree that you can build 
in Timberborn. You have birch trees, which take nine days to grow and give you one log. Pine trees that uh, take 12 days to grow and give you two logs. And maple trees, which take 24 logs to grow and give you eight days. Wait, whatever, I mixed that sentence up, right? Sue me. Theoretically, this is the most efficient one because it gives you one log for every three days. However, I'm going to build a mixture because these like these trees aren't going to last forever and I can't wait 24 days for my first harvest to come in. Our colony is perfectly self-sustaining now once we have this built though, which means we can start to expand all across this massive gigantic map. This guy right here though, he's an absolute hero of the town, Yavo. All he does all day, 24/7 with the exception of going for food and sleeping, is run on this wheel and power this lumber mill. That is his entire job, okay? This is the backbone of beaver civilization right here. If you ask the question, who is it that are the heroes in our society? It's this guy. This guy who runs on this wheel. Oh, our carrot harvest is finally in too. That means my beavers are going to live much longer because every beaver loves a good carrot. There's not a whole lot of trees left, so I think I'm going to stick down to one final lumberjack and then get the forester to start planting. Look at him go. He's filling out this area. These will take nine days to grow. and They'll only give me one log, which, like, super sucks. But, you know, I only have to wait nine days to get fresh logs. Nice. My beavers are happier than ever. We just hit six happiness, which is our new, our new tier. Nutrition one. That's from all those carrots that we just harvested. I think our next major goal uh, will be twofold. First of all, it will probably be to expand our water pumping once we get more population. But more importantly, I think it's time we started talking about how water works in this game and how important it is. I'm going to place a pair of dams here because when the dry season comes, when the drought comes, you see all this nice green area that we're growing crops on right now. That's going to go and turn into this horrifying cracked black soil that nothing will grow on. So if we want to continue to grow crops throughout the dry season, we need to dam up the river. Now that's going to be a pretty long and tedious process. It's going to take up a lot of wood. But in most cases, in this particular game though, our river can be dammed with just two blocks, which is excellent. What's really cool is the, the water physics in this game are actually modeled in a really interesting way. Like you can see, water coming around the outside tends to flow faster because it has to go like around a larger curve. And then water, there tends to be like little pools, like eddies and stuff like that where it doesn't make sense for water to flow because it, it doesn't have anywhere realistic to go. And yeah, it's interesting. And you'll also see like where there's a corner, water will tend to flow much quicker. And there's like interesting ways the water interacts with each other. And you can like, re you can actually like nearly flood the map if you build like a dam big enough, which might actually be one of my goals in this game eventually. On the topic of satisfying needs though, I think it would be cool to unlock shrubs. They're a little bit expensive, but they make people happy. I don't really know how they work and I kind of want to experiment with them. Oh, I might have to build more housing for people to have more babies. That might be where I'm going wrong. It's almost like if people don't have anywhere to live, it's hard for them to have a family. I'll correct that right now with some beaver government subsidized housing. I also think these blueberry bushes are now a little bit redundant and will probably transition fully to a carrot economy. Plant some fresh pine trees down now that all the birch trees are planted. Ah, beavers are happier than ever. We managed to satisfy the aesthetics. By planting this somewhere central where a lot of beavers are going to run past it, I think that's uh, cheered them all up and made them a bit happier. And that actually gives them a 10% working speed boost, which is pretty damn good. Uh-oh, dry season is coming in 2.9 days. That means I need to get this dam built ASAP. Let's mark it as uh, maximum priority. I'm even going to pull people off of lumberjacking and off of foresting and put them into building so we can get that built ASAP. The cool thing is this single dam piece here is actually affecting the flow of the water. You can see that the water level behind here is slightly higher than it was before. Not like massively, but this is just kind of constricting the flow ever so slightly. And there is the second one. And that should, in theory, make it so that we'll be able to hold a little bit of extra water into the, uh, into the dry season. 0.1 days until the dry season. And we got a new baby! Ayagi has been born! Welcome to the colony, Ayagi. The drought has started. And if I go and find the source of the river, the river should start drying up very quickly. Oh my god, this map is absolutely gigantic. Where is the start of the river? Isn't that how it works? Does it not like backflow? Oh, well, no, no, no. There it is. It's the other way. All right. Our little waterfall is now dry. No water is running. And all of this water will leave the map. But because we built this little dam, we have a nice supply of water. Even though the rest of the map will go dry and grim, we'll be able to keep a little bit of water. We probably won't last the entire dry season on this water because we still are pumping it. It should be enough to see us through, though. 
got all those pine trees planted, let's finally throw down our super efficient maple trees. And now that we have a production line of trees going, I'll even uh, spend a little bit more time plopping down a few extras. And there it is, the rest of the map is a barren wasteland. It's even hard to tell where the river used to be, whilst we have a very, very slight oasis of water up here that'll keep us going. I'm quite happy with my little colony, we've managed to survive our very first dry season. I mean, we're still halfway through the dry season. I mean, this water could, in theory, go away, but I think we'll be fine. Might be a good idea for me to get a second forester, or at least consider a way of getting access to more trees or growing area. The other thing I could consider is actually setting up a colony. You can build extra district centers all around the place and then use that to build out a second district, and then you can trade between your districts. I haven't figured out how to do the trade thing, but the possibilities that you can do in this game are pretty awesome. Let's see, how does an irrigation tower work? I'll unlock it, and I guess it just uses water. So I could increase my growing area over here. Ah, oh, beautiful. Our very first harvest of birch trees is coming through. I think I'll need another forester's hut as well to be able to maintain this level of demand for their services, especially on two different plateaus, because it's hard to path between them. So I'll grab myself another forester hut. This feels like it's kind of like the crunch time, is can you make it through your first drought and get a sustainable supply of wood? This feels like the game's biggest like early game challenge, and I'm feeling like I've overcome it. I'm feeling like my little my little uh, guys are happy. Oh my god, we're getting so many babies. Vezilkri, Vezumbi, uh, Mezilkri. <laughs> I'm even saying their names wrong. And the drought is over, the water is flowing, the river will begin to make the land green again. And we actually managed to not use all this water. Is it, are you gonna flow? Or is it just taking time? Oh yeah, you can see the river. It's starting to come again. I wonder, there's another water source nearby. Oh yeah, there it is. Look at it, it's flowing. The water has returned to the land. It's so cool. It's such a cool and simple mechanic because I could actually build like a little artificial reservoir here with like raisable and lowerable floodgates. Like if I wanted to like build a giant pool of water, I could. I could even turn this entire plateau into a dam for, uh, for water storage. I won't do that because that's kind of insane, but it is possible. You can see the green starting to return to the landscape. That's part of the game that's like the most satisfying to me is seeing like all the land kind of become, you know, lush and beautiful again as the water begins to flow. Supply will last for 8.5 hours. So I think this needs a constant supply of water, which likely means I need to unlock a large water tank and maybe increase the amount of water pumping I'm doing. I'm curious though, is it possible for like water pumps to be powered by these things? It feels kind of crazy to me that water can only be uh, obtained by like beaver power. Although I guess that's like a maintenance cost for your whole, you know, civilization. Yeah, this irrigation tower uses an insane amount of water. I think I'm going to pause it for now because it, it is just ridiculous. It's basically completely deprived my colony of water. I'm, hope I'm hoping that by giving my beavers a 15 hour working day that they might actually have more children over time. And it looks like it's kind of working. We've been having a lot more children since I started doing it. Who knew? If people have free time, they'll find a way to fill it. I've got so many carrots and berries, it's actually insane. I think I'm I think I'm gonna delete my gatherer flags now because berries only fulfill hunger, whereas carrots fulfill nutrition one and stuff like that. I think it's time for my society to to advance beyond uh basic berry gathering. And we'll just straight up get rid of most of these uh most of these berry bushes over here. We don't need them. As long as we got water, we'll be fine. Although even then, water can be a bit of a dubious task. It is time, however, to start planting some potatoes. That is uh, going to give us access to nutrition too. Although the one downside of potatoes is you actually have to grill them in order to get the uh, the upgrade. But you know what? I'm okay with grilling my potatoes. We have renewable wood, even if it's not like a perfectly good economy yet. Oh no, we got our first death. Kaya died of old age. That's why we need to get our potato fields up. If we're able to get these built, people won't die so old. And I think my first harvest of pine trees is coming through as well, which I'm super excited about. Because now I actually have wood and I can start expanding my town again. We've got like a huge amount of like new beavers growing up, new beavers being born. Got our renewable wood supply going and we are feeling good. Built a few extra shrubs here because I want to satisfy the aesthetics of my people. If we can keep this need like really, really well looked after, they'll uh, work 10% faster. That seems like a pretty important thing to uh, take care of to me. I do think it's time that we got ourselves a hauling post because 
it's been a very long time where just the regular old you know people have been hauling around their goods or even the workers of a particular district are the ones who have to haul their goods around so this will just make everyone's lives easier plus anyone who works in the hauling post will get about 100 percent strength increase which i'm pretty sure means they can carry more stuff yeah see they can carry up to 10 kilos uh per beaver and Zane here instead can now carry 20 because he works at the hauling post. So he's way better at actually carrying things around. Not well, three days until the next dry season. And I'd actually like to build a small reservoir here. I'll start by unlocking some levees. I need to get a path over here is the problem. I forgot to, uh, <laughs> forgot that I need a path. I'm also going to unlock wooden stairs at long last so I can uh, choose where my beavers go up and down levels. We'll start by placing a ton of levees here and we'll make sure that our workers have access to getting up on top of the dam that we're building. Ooh, we've got our first supply of potato crops done. See, they're now fully grown. And this uh, grill maker will be hard at work turning one group of potatoes into a full four meals. So this is like super efficient food production here. And already a few of my little beavers have nutrition too satisfied. Oh, and nutrition too actually increases the strength of my beavers which I think means they can carry more stuff. I'm like 99% sure. Oh, we've got the beginnings of our levy. Now it won't be much use for this cycle of uh, drought, unfortunately. The next cycle, however, we will have a nice reservoir in here to look forward to. Man, my population is exploding. So many people are being born. And just as I say that, of course, someone died. Zernagath, I loved you. I'm, I'm sad to see you go. And here's the drought. The river is drying up. The waterfall has already stopped. And the land will return to a barren wasteland that it is kind of always trying to revert to. That we're constantly fighting. The nice thing is, though, the lack of flowing water during the drought season will make this construction project a little bit easier because I won't have to deal with like flowing water like making things more difficult for me. I do think however I don't quite have enough farmers to manage this much farmland. So let's throw down another farmhouse and see if we can make that work for us. I'll put it at high priority too because I want them to build this really really quick because I got very very few logs at the moment. The drought is over and the river is flowing again. There's like something really nice about the cadence of how the uh, river comes and goes. It like is like a little bit of a landmark for when you're playing the game. It's like, oh, the river is gone. That means like it's like winter. It's hard. It's difficult. Oh, it's not quite winter. It's more like summer. But I'm pretty excited about this levy. We actually did a lot of construction through the drought. Um, a lot of our bottleneck though is waiting for these trees to grow. But our very first maple harvest is about to come in. And every single one of these trees is worth eight wood each. And I'm just planting so many more maples because I need them. We've almost filled up all of our houses, so I think it's time we slap down some even more. Although I don't know if our food and water production can actually keep pace at the moment. The water is starting to get redirected. Look at it. Did you just see it fill up? Oh man, it's filling up. Now hopefully that doesn't cause me problems downstream. Uh-oh, I've increased the water flow. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, whoops. This is a dangerous game that I'm playing right here. But we have a huge reservoir of water here that we can start pumping water out of now. All right, note to self, be a little bit more careful with how you build these dams because <laughs> it, it can almost go really poorly for you. Oh, it went really poorly. They flooded, I flooded my tree lands. Oh, no. That's not what I want to happen. I'm hoping that I can, like, regularize the flow here. There we go. We got our two floodgates in place. That's regulating the flow of this water. And it actually looks like it's working just fine. I just need the last couple of levees built. And now we've got a much more convenient place to pump water from. Oh, beautiful. Our very first maple trees are ready. Eight logs per tree. Now that's a thing of beauty. I think they take a while to cut down though. And these guys can only carry so many logs. Wow, well, yeah, it actually does take a very long time to cut them down. Man, look at that. Look at my wood just shoot up. <laughs> Oh my god. Dude, sometimes when you're playing video games, they make you say things that <laughs> just sound so... <laughs> I researched uh, large water tanks specifically for this project as well. So we'll be able to... St oh no, it takes gears? Oh no. I don't have a way to make gears. Hang on. You make gears from planks? Oh no. Well, I guess my plan was kind of ruined here and I researched this in vain. At the very least, I can pop down like three small water tanks and just have another source of water for my people. I kind of wish there was a way to like brew beaver beer from like berries and water. That would be neat. I'm just imagining a colony of beavers just like completely toasted out of their minds trying to like form a society. But if I can satisfy the beavers need for spirituality, they'll actually work 30% faster. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock the temple. It's super expensive. 120 wood and 40 planks. 
and it takes up a huge amount of space. Building it though will make my colony so much better. This is this is like one of the coolest parts of the game. Like the fact that you could build like little dams that flow water out and you know block the water. It, it's just such a simple and cool concept and it works so well. And since our first harvest of maple is coming in, I'm feeling super comfortable about just retooling my entire production line into maple production. Yes, the maple must flow. It's like, <laughs> you swear I'm living in Canada now. <laughs> These regular lodges only have three people and they cost 12 logs. Whereas the double lodge actually houses six and only costs 20. So this is actually more efficient for my wood. And they're actually more space efficient as well. Hell yeah. I don't know why, but for as long as I've known Morbus, he's always like been a repre represented by an otter to me. And there's something about seeing like a little beaver industriously working away planting trees that makes me think of Morbus. Like this is just when he's editing my videos, this is what I see. Just a little dude, like a little furry arms, just like tinkering away with a thing. Oh, nice. We built the temple. It's finished. People are coming in. They're getting their needs met. Now my people are going to be super effective. Although it doesn't seem to have an effect on children. Everyone else, though, it seems to have a pretty good effect. New faction unlocked the Iron Teeth. Oh, apparently this game has other factions too. Let's save the game and see what's different about them. So we start a new game and we choose the Iron Teeth faction. They achieve progress through ingenuity, efficiency, and disregard for the environment. Work hard, work hard. So these are the Iron Guys. I like them. I like their color. They're kind of like, I don't know, they, they remind me of like Dark Iron Dwarves from uh, World of Warcraft. And their buildings look different too. Oh, they build breeding pods. Oh, that's weird. Oh, that's real weird. Oh, these are guys like the high tech faction. You have access to the barrack, which is like a massive shared house. It's really expensive though. It costs 40 wood to house 10 people. Oh, I wonder what else is different for these guys. Ooh, they have deep water pumps, which go much further down. Oh yeah, wow, look at that. Look how far that thing can siphon off water. What else do they got that's unique to them? I mean, it looks like they got mostly the same kind of things. Oh, their monuments are different. No, 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 I think they're the same. Ooh, you can use wood to produce horsepower as these guys instead of using wind power. So th yeah, these are like the high tech faction. That's a real, I wasn't expecting this game to have such a different play style between the two factions. Cause like the fact that they need berries to breed gives you a lot more control over it, but it also requires you to keep producing berries. If you'd like to see me do a playthrough as these iron guys, let me know. But that's going to be it for the video. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.